like knife wounds from the back. Ruined a pretty good suit. Crockett and Jones wing tips. Obviously not from the neighborhood. No wallet. Just a business card case here. Hey, check this out. Ligature marks on his wrists. Somebody had him tied up. What's this? It's not a tattoo. It looks like fresh ink. Bank account, password. One thing I know for sure, it's definitely not his lucky number. Bring the prisoner here. On your knees. Yes, Fraulein Vera. Hey, hey, it's Lorraine, the nutritionist. Lick her boots, you scum. Talk about your low-calorie diet. You didn't say please. May I please lick your boot, Fraulein? Lick it clean. And don't get your lice on her. I swear, I had nothing to do with any murder. The guy gave me 10 grand to put that in Lorraine's place, and that's all I did. Which guy? His name is Phil. I met him outside of Lorraine's. He said he was looking for some restaurant, and after we hooked up at his hotel a few times, he asked me to plant the camera the next time Charlie came by. Hey, what do we have here? A program to operate remote cameras. Yeah, that's standard equipment in the security business. Big deal. Let's turn one on and see what we come up with. Looks like the property room in our precinct. You're under arrest for extortion. Hook him up. Have you ever set me up? Hey, B, check this out. She set me up. It's a letter of recommendation for our friend here addressed to the Hallowell Group dated last year. Check out the signature at the bottom. According to her letter of recommendation, Rita Shavoy met Bobby Amato 13 years ago when his sister was killed. Rita was a victim's rights advocate back then. What was his sister's name? Ellie. Ellie Amato. Ellie's law. Mm -hmm, the anti-stalking statute. Rita fought to make that happen. Now we know what a fighter she is and how corrupt the husband is. The Shavoys have attended some of our functions, but there was no relationship. Well, what about you, Ms. Reeves? Did you ever talk to Rita Shalvoy about Charles Whitley? Maybe complain about him? No. What a strange question. Well, you offered him the retirement package. You were sent the DVD. You tried to fire him. This campaign to get rid of Mr. Whitley, if it didn't come from you, it certainly came through you. That is completely untrue. Half an hour after she talks to us, Caroline Reeves is crying on Thea Curry's shoulder. We should remind Councilwoman Curry she has an obligation to report any criminal activity to us. Whatever your detective saw is nobody's business. Right. Nobody's business, of course. Isn't this the school the Obamas considered for their girls? Georgetown Day School? I think it was. Are you thinking of it for your kids? You're moving to Washington? My husband and I have shared custody, and he's had job offers, so we're just, you never know. The people at Georgetown Day School say Thea Curry visited twice. She told them that she was the one who might be moving to D.C., not her ex-husband. Of course. It's been staring us in the face. New York has an open U.S. Senate seat. Governor Shalvoy can appoint whoever he wants to fill that vacancy. If there's something in it for him. Meanwhile, Thea Curry's lover, Caroline Reeves, tries to coax Charles Whitley into early retirement. When that didn't work, Rita's loyal to a fault private spy dug up the dirt on Whitley to force him out of his job. That's the horse trade. Thea Curry becomes senator, and Rita Shalvoy becomes executive director of a prestigious international charity. The Shalvoys are running a big game of musical chairs. And Charles Whitley didn't want to give up his seat, but it's still not clear if Amato killed Whitley on Rita Shalvoy's orders or what the governor knows about his wife's involvement. We'll have to find out, won't we? Mrs. Shalvoy wanted my help forcing Whitley out of the Boland Initiative. She told me about his nosebleed at the Jimmy Carter dinner. She said I'd have no trouble finding something on him. Did she pay you? She gave me a diamond necklace, told me where I could sell it. I got 20 grand for it. Two weeks after I sent the DVD to Caroline Reeves, Mrs. Shalvoy called me. She said Whitley was being stubborn and would I remove him. Mrs. Shalvoy said he was standing in her way of doing great things. She reminded me of all the good she'd done, Ellie's Law. And how could I turn my back on her now? Rita told me that Amato might try to drag her down with him. Let's not insult each other's intelligence, okay? 
We both know what this murder was about. A Senate seat. Seems that behind every success story of the last 10 years, a scandal is exploding. We're facing a rising sea of corruption, and we wonder, who will be the next to be drowned? Who will be saved? And what will become of our good works? You expect me to implicate Rita and jeopardize my family? Your family? They mean as much to you as balloons and bumper stickers. Your whoring proves it. Be careful, Jack. I'll attribute that to the stress of your campaign. I know you're in a dead heat with Joe Chappelle. I also know a few things about Joe. Maybe could swing the numbers your way. You're trying to buy me off? Well, you worry about your good works, Jack. How are you gonna safeguard them if you're not in the game anymore? Convene a grand jury to investigate the selling of a Senate seat by Governor Shalvoy. Once we prove the why of Whitley's murder, we can prove the who. My friend Caroline Reeves agreed to urge Mr. Whitley to retire. He refused. It was then that I called the governor and told him that the Boland job wasn't opening up. And what did the governor say? That he'd let me know about the Senate appointment. A week later, Caroline told me that Mr. Whitley had been murdered. My only criterion is who will best represent the state of New York. Right now, I'm leaning towards someone I've had my disagreements with in the past, but he's seasoned enough to handle the rough and tumble world of national politics. Manhattan District Attorney Jack McCoy is at the top of my list. Thank you. Chalvoy must have found out we convened a grand jury on him. He's muddying the waters. We saw the news during the lunch break, and some of us wondered if Jack McCoy might be horse trading with the governor, too. Mr. Foreman, Jack McCoy is not a target of your investigation. Maybe Thea Curry was subpoenaed because McCoy's trying to whittle down his competition for the Senate job. We'd like to hear what he has to say about it. Have you ever sought an interim appointment to the United States Senate? Never. I'm running for election to remain the district attorney. I have no desire to hold any other office. Have you ever discussed the interim Senate seat with Governor Shalvoy? Not as it concerns myself. Um. Yes. In other words, Mr. McCoy, you had a discussion with the governor about it. Yes. And yesterday, the governor said he was thinking of appointing you. Why shouldn't we infer you made a deal? I convened this grand jury because the police uncovered evidence of political corruption during the investigation of a murder. The governor's announcement is a ploy to hijack your inquiry. I never saw it and will not accept appointment to the Senate because I remain committed to one thing, to serve this city as its chief law enforcement officer. And in that capacity, I will prosecute political corruption wherever it occurs and whomever perpetrates it. They voted a sealed indictment against Governor Shalvoy for official misconduct and attempted bribe receiving in the second degree. Nothing about you. It's just an indictment. We still don't have enough evidence to convict him in trial. It's sufficient for what I need to do with it. Whatever you have to say to me, Jack, you say in front of my wife. I have a sealed indictment against you for bartering the Senate seat with Thea Curry. What do you want from me? Corroboration of Bobby Amato's testimony against your wife for Charles Whitley's murder. Jack, this vendetta against me is pathological. If you give me what I need, I'll withdraw the indictment as legally insufficient before it even sees the light of day. Donald, I remind you that every conversation we've had is subject to the spousal privilege. I can stop you from testifying against me, just as you can stop me from testifying against you. The privilege has exceptions. Yes, I know. Did Bobby Amato mention a necklace? The diamond necklace. That's how Rita paid him. Amato sold it to a jeweler. It's an exception to the privilege if I see my wife take a necklace out of our safe and put it in her purse. A necklace our insurance company has a picture of. Of course, for our son's sake. I can't take the stand against Rita. 
No, you wouldn't have to. If the jeweler recognizes the necklace from the photo, that corroborates the motto's story. Bastard. After I cleaned up after you and that Brazilian whore. Just suck it up, Rita. You know, when I heard that Whitley was killed, I knew it had to be her. She was in heat for the bowling job. You're sick. Jack, he's framing me. This is what he's always wanted so that he could be with his whores. Rita. You have no idea what it's been like to live like this. Share a bed with him. Rita, don't do this to yourself. He owed me. You owe me! 